so today we'll be starting with the apm so what is the apm apm is a java library like a selenium which is used to automate the mobile applications on androids and ios ios means apple phone if you visit this website apm.io this is the official website of apm here and here you can see that it is used to automate the mobiles which is android mobile or ios mobiles you can automate that particular thing for apm we need to configure some uh, requirements if you want to run this apm so we have to run some requirements on our system before running this particular apm the requirement number 1 is that we have to install jdk on our system up till now when i was doing the selenium i was working on the eclipse directly and i told you that eclipse has bundled up uh, java and you do not have to install java separately but when we'll be running the apm we need to have java installed on my system like we have done jenkins in our last exam uh, class so there also we told you that if you want to run the jenkins so we'll be running the jenkins from the command prompt and we need to install java on our system and set the environment variable so that is the same requirement for the apm also and for that i have already downloaded java on our system so you can go to this google.com you can write download jdk and you can download this latest version of the jdk from here you can download the latest version that is jdk 21 is the latest version you can download jdk 21 for the windows operating system and you can download this one x64 installer this one and it will be downloaded and then then you can install it on your system okay now what you have to do second thing is again you go to the google.com and again write download jdk 8 so we require two versions of the jdk one is the latest version that is jdk 17 or jdk 21 which is the latest version and you also require to download the old version of java that is download jdk 8 if you write download jdk 8 again you will get this link of downloading downloading jdk 8 and again you can download it as per your windows x64 this one you can download it so i have already if you look at my system i have already downloaded if you uh, sorry downloads so you see i have both the versions of java i have this jdk 17 as well as i have jdk 8 both both i have downloaded first you have to install this jdk 17 okay first you have to install this jdk 17 so i have already installed this jdk 17 then you can look at it and after installing jdk 17 then install the jdk 8 okay like here if you look at it my system program files java and if you look at this java i have this jdk 17 as well as i have jdk 1.8 both the versions i have now as i told you in my last class for the jenkins that you have to set the environment variable for java so we'll be setting the environment variable for jdk 17 not for jdk 8 so again if you look at my system i will go to the jdk 17 and bin and then i will copy the path up to the bin and then 
in this PC, right click, properties, advanced system settings, environment variable, user environment variable above, in user environment variable click on new and then variable name java underscore home you have to write the variable name java underscore home and you have to paste the path up to the location of jdk 17 c program files java jdk 17 i have already set it here you see jdk 17 then click on this path in the user variable only double click and then again click on this new button and then paste the path up to the jdk bin of jdk 17 only and again if you see i have already set this path so you have to set the environment variable only for jdk 17 and not for jdk 8 but you have to install both of them jdk 17 as well as jdk 8 but you have to set the environment variable only for jdk 17 this we have already set when we were doing the jenkins then also we have already set the java environment variable okay now what is the second thing the second thing which we have to do after installing the java on our system that is the first requirement to run the apm the second requirement is that again you go to after installing the java you go to this google.com and write download android studio okay now what is this android studio android studio is a uh, you can say a library used to create using the android studio we use the uh, android api android library where we can develop the android applications okay so now if i want to automate the android mobile then on our system we have to install the android studio but if my phone is not an android phone and if it is an apple phone that is it is an iphone then in that case we have to download x code so x code will be downloaded on a mac operating system okay because it is it, it is a apple software so it will not work on a windows operating system so if you want to test the iphone if you want to test the application of the iphone then in that case you have to use a mac operating system it will not be executed through the windows operating system and for iphone or for iphone, uh, iPhone application android studio will not work there we have to download another software which is called x code okay so but because my machine is a windows operating system and i will be automating the androids operating uh, androids uh, then a mobile so i have to download android studio on my system so i will write android studio download android studio and then you click on this android studio and you can download android studio from here I have already downloaded it on my system. Okay. I have already downloaded it on my system. Here, so you will get the setup. You can double click it and it will start installing Android Studio on your system. The first because I have already installed it, so I can know so I will not be able to uh, share the screen with you how it will be installing, but I can explain you that is when you double click and it will start installing 
तो फर्स्ट स्क्रीन इट विल गिव यू डू इज द टू एक्सेप्ट द लाइसेंस तो यू टू सेलेक्ट द फाइल एंड देन क्लिक ऑन एक्सेप्ट लाइसेंस एंड व्हेन यू एक्सेप्ट क्लिक ऑन दिस एक्सेप्ट लाइसेंस देन इट विल गिव यू द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इट विल इंस्टॉल द एंड्रॉइड स्टूडियो वर्जन से 34 और 35 एंड इट विल गिव यू द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इट रिक्वायर्स दिस मच ऑफ रैम एंड द स्पेस and it will install it in this particular drive location and when you select okay yes then it will start installing the android studio on your system when the android studio is installed on your system it will open one more window in which it will ask you to create a project android project to so click on this Uh, create a new android project you can click on it and it will again open a new window from where you have to select the device so from there you can se select so you will get the images of the mobiles so you can select the image of the mobile second image or third image that is with the basic configuration and then you can click next next you have to just uh, and, uh, and it will give you the name of the project you can just and the language you can select java that is you want a java language and then you have to just click on next and it will create a android project okay so like if you look at my system so, so when you install the android studio at that point of of time only at the time of the installation only it will create a an android project now after you have installed this particular uh, android studio and the android project is created then you go to this c drive okay uh, and you go to this and a program files here you will get this android you will get this android studio and inside this android studio you will get this bin 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 and here you will get the this batch file studio window studio batch file when you will when when you will be uh, installing the android studio for the first time and you will be creating the project then it will automatically open the project but later on if you if you want to open the project again because for the first time it will automatically create the project and it will automatically open the project but after that let's say i have closed the project and then again i want to open the project for that you can go to this location c program files android and dot studio bin and you can double click on this batch file studio dot batch file so this is the first screen this is the screen which will automatically open when you create the project for the first time so when you first time uh, this is this type of a screen it will open okay so this is this is the android project it has created okay so you do, so you do not have to uh, uh, write any code over here you do not have to write anything over here so but we we, we will be creating this project because from this project i can get this virtual device here you see here this is the device manager written over here after creating this particular project <coughs> you will get this virtual device here virtual device and when you click on this device here so you you can see that it has opened this virtual device so i if if i do not have a real time device with me i can use this emulator or simulator a virtual device to test my application okay that that, uh, that particular device will automatically be created like if i stop the device it will stop the device this particular device device will automatically be created when we create this particular project one more thing so th this particular project will be created at run time when you install the android studio at that particular time only 
it will create this particular project. Okay. Now, when you create, when you have created this project for the first time, you have to go to this tools here. And inside tools, you have to go to this SDK manager here. So in tools, you will find this SDK manager. And when you click on this SDK manager, here you will find this SDK tools. Click on this SDK tools. And after clicking on this SDK tools, it will give you the information that these are the things it has installed. Like here it is installed. When you click on this hide obsolete package, when you uncheck it, after unchecking, it will give you this Android SDK tools obsolete. It will be visible only when you uncheck it. When you uncheck it, then only it will be visible here. And here it will be written like on my system, it is written installed. But on your system, it will be written not installed. You have to install it. Android SDK tools. You click on it and click on the OK button and it will start installing this SDK tools also. So my point is that when you have downloaded the Android Studio and when you have installed the Android Studio, it will not install SDK tools because this SDK tools is obsolete. Obsolete means it is an old version. It is old. So it will it will not be installed, but I require this SDK tools also on my system. So for that I have to install it. So for that what is the process? The process is when you when you open this particular project, go to tools, go to this and uh, this thing SDK manager, and then click on this SDK tools, and then click on this hide absolute package, uncheck it and then you will find it then you can check and okay and then it will be installed okay so basically this is the this is the android project which will be created when we'll be installing the android studio and what is the use of this project the use of this project is from here i can use this emulator here this is my emulator or uh, the second use is that from here I can install the tools. Okay, so for that we require this particular project. So now again, I am exiting this particular now. So after doing this particular thing, again what we have to do, you have to go to the users, this one. See users. And inside users, you will get this uh, Paraksaxena or any, any name. Okay, click on this name and here you will get one package which is a hidden package that is app data. App data. <coughs> this is a hidden folder app data. So you have to write the app data, then only it will be visible. Inside app data, again you go to the local. Local. And inside the local, you will go again get this Android. And in Android, you will get this SDK. Yeah. Again, we have to copy the path of this SDK, Android Software Development Kit. So you have to copy the path of this location. C users, Paraksaxen, App Data, local Android SDK. And again, you have to go to this PC. Right click, Properties. Advanced system settings, environment variable, and again click on this new and write A N D R O I D Android underscore home. Like we have said the environment for Java underscore home. Similarly, we have to set the environment variable for Android underscore home. And then paste the path up to the SDK like this and click on OK. So this is the home directory where your Android SDK will be installed. I have already set it. You can check from here. Here. Then inside the Android Studio, here, Android SDK, you will find these packages. 
प्लेटफॉर्म टूल्स टूल्स emulator these are the package these are the folders you will find emulator you will find this folder sdk emulator here again you will find this folder platform tools in sdk and tools which have just installed tools so what you have to do you have to copy the path control c up to the tools and again you have to click on this path where we have set the java jdk bin path in the user variable only double click and paste paste it over here like you see tools here we have written tools here see users parak saxena app data local android sdk tools similarly if you look at above here we have set the environment variable for android sdk emulator and similarly if you look at above we have set the environment variable for platform tools so these are the three paths we have to set platform tools path emulator path tools path okay understood so we have already set it on our system everything so i am showing it on my system so basically what we have done up till now we have downloaded jdk 17 or 21 and installed and set the environment variable then we have all installed the jdk 8 on our system we do not have to set any environment variable for jdk 8 then we have downloaded android studio on our system and when we install the android studio we have to accept the license and then it will install the android studio on our system and at the time of installation only it will create a project like we have opened that particular project and when it create the project from there you can add the tools so how can we add the tools i have shown you that is go to the sdk manager and then uncheck uh, the uh, obsolete and from there you can install the tools because tools will not be installed otherwise and after you have installed the tools then again what you have to do you have to set the environment variable for android underscore home and you have to give the location of the sdk where your sdk is installed and then you have to set the path environment path for the platform tools tools and emulator okay after doing all these things now what is the third step the third step is again go to this google.com and write download node js okay node js node js i am downloading because i need to install the apm server for that i need node js okay so i will click on this node js and again window installer will download the node js on my system i have already downloaded it so you can check from my machine all the things which we have downloaded and dot studio is downloaded node js here this is a setup just double click and click on next 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 that's all it will install the node js on your system we do not have to set any environment variable for node js like we have set the environment variable for java we have set the environment variable for android for node js there is no need to set any environment variable just download and install by clicking on next 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 and it will install node js on your system so it means we have downloaded java we have downloaded and installed java we have downloaded android studio we have installed the android studio and we have created the android studio project we have set the environment variable for java we have set the environment variable for android studio and then we have downloaded the node js and we have installed the node js that's it now after you have downloaded the node js you have to open the command prompt on your system cmd okay and after opening the command prompt we need to install the apm server 
now what is the apm server when i was doing the selenium so i was directly connecting to the browser without using any server okay but now what i have to do i have to connect to the to my mobile device it can be real time device or as i shown you it can be emulator so i have to send the command like click command to my device or for for that particular thing i am sending the command from my java program to the emulator or or to the real time device that is i want to click on it so you need to have the server apm server so it means java java application is called apm client the java application like i was writing the java application for writing the click of a for or, or or i was using the send keys for the typing so similarly here also i will be using a java program and using the java program well i will be clicking on the on a mobile application so that particular java application is called apm client or java client and that particular java application has to connect with the apm server and when it connects to the apm server then only apm server sends the click command to the device so for that we need to install the apm server on our machine and for installing the apm server first we have to download node js because we will be using the npm command that is a node command to install the apm server now what is the command to install the apm server you can go to this apm dot io you can go to this quick start you can click on here quick start and the first step is here it is showing is install apm requirements i have already discussed and then installing apm you can click on it and here it is a command npm command this npm is a node js command so for this npm command we have to download node js on our system first and after that this is the command simple you can just copy this command npm space i dash g apm this is the command which you can directly write on your command prompt and it will install the apm server on your machine on my machine it is already installed so what if i click on this npm space i dash g apm and click on enter so it will check whether the apm is there or not and if the apm is available then it will not install it or otherwise it will update it or it will give give it like this it will start checking and installing if it is not available it will install it if it is available then it will give you the error or otherwise it will update the apm server just write this command on the command prompt and click on this enter button okay so it has added it has added two packages okay removed 48 packages so it means it has updated the apm server now after installing the apm server the next thing which i need to install is a driver like i told you chrome driver is is an is, is a driver which is used to automate the chrome so similarly when we are uh, using this apm so we have to install this ui automator 2 driver this one so ui automator 2 is a driver which is used for the android device so it will be installing this ui automator 2 on your phone this is this is a driver which is installed and we send the command to this particular to driver only and this driver performs the action on the mobile so it is compulsory that we have to install this ui automator to driver 
तो अगेन क्लिक ऑन दिस यू आई ऑटोमेटेड टू ड्राइवर जस्ट अ सेकेंड इंस्टेड ऑफ क्लिकिंग इट यू कैन लेट अस चेक फ्रॉम हियर we can go to the next step then here from here you can check installing ui automator to drive and from here there is a command again install the driver and this is the command again you can copy this command from here only that is apm space driver space install ui automator to like this The law on my machine it is already installed, so it will give you the error. That is, it will it is already installed. A driver named is already installed. So if you want to update it, you can update it. So instead of install, I can write update. I can write update. So it will update the drive. so in that way this is the command first command npm space i space hyphen g apm which will install the apm server and then you have to install the driver also this is the command apm driver is, is apm space driver space install space ui automator 2 it will install the driver otherwise you can update the driver if it is already installed now it has been updated so now what you can do you can just write apm a double p i u m to check whether the apm server is installed or not when you write apm and click on enter it will start the apm server okay so in that way it will start the apm server welcome to the apm so whenever you want to start the apm server just open the command prompt and write a double p i u m apm and click on enter and this server will be started and it is waiting that is your client code client code means java program can connect to this server on this port 4723 so 4723 is a port on which this server is running okay again i will control c and close it so control c you can close the server so i think you have understood what all things we have done we we have installed java 17 and 8 we have set the environment variable for for for, for jdk 17 then we have installed android studio android studio we have created a project and from there we have installed the tools because otherwise tools are obsolete they will not be installed so we have installed the tools and then we have set the environment variable again for the android studio where the sdk is and the environment variable for the path and then we have downloaded the node js and after downloading the node js we have installed the apm server and the apm driver now last thing which we have to do in a configuration is that is we can test our mobile application on the real time device or on the emulator both in both the things you have to do certain settings like i am showing you on the emulator the same thing you have to do on a uh, real time device also so again i will open the emulator for emulator you have to go to this c then program files then android android studio bin and then we have to click on this studio batch here if emulator is not working because one more important thing because emulator requires ram good ram and good processing speed if ram is not there good ram is not there and good processing speed is not there then in that case 
it will not work okay so like i am again uh, wiping the data because i i want to show it to you again from the fresh so it is taking 10 gb of the size you see so it it takes lot of size lo and lot of memory 16 gb is is that required so sometime uh, emulator will not work so in that case if emulator is not working emulator is not there and it is taking lot of space then in that case no need to worry you can use a real time device that is the phone a actual phone you can use okay so uh, but i am because actual phone i am uh, 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 i am not connected right now so i will show you on the emulator only so i will swipe uh, wipe the data and now see it has taken 2.2 gb of the space it means it has uh, uh, removed the data information so when you uh, want to uh, run this particular device just click on this play button Okay, so it is initializing, it takes some time. It, it, it takes some time to boot and everything okay so now this is the device so if if this device is not coming again one more important thing which i'm trying to tell you is that if the real time device is there and you are not able to use the emulator then also you can use the real time device only but what you have to do you have to make some settings what are the settings on the mobile that is you have to go to the you have to go to these settings on your mobile and in the settings you can search for about phone like here i am getting this about emulated device in the settings you will get about phone go to this about phone and there you will get the build number here build number on some on some devices there are there is no build number so you will get some uid number or you can search on the google because on some mobiles build number you will not be able to find build number in that case what you can do you can go to this google like i'm i'm going to this uh, google if uh, and then if i write over here how to uh, uh, enable enable developer option developer option in say oneplus or 
रियल मी तो इसी तो यू कैन चेक फ्रॉम हेयर हाउ टू अनेबल डेवलपर ऑप्शन इन रियल मी तो इट विल गिव यू द इन्फॉर्मेशन गो टू सेटिंग गो टू अबाउट फोन एंड देन इन अबाउट फोन यू विल गेट द वर्जन टैप सेवन टाइप्स ओके तो तो इन सम मोबाइल इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू फाइंड दिस डेवलपर बिल्ड बिल्ड नंबर देन यू कैन सर्च फ्रॉम हेयर हाउ टू अनेबल डेवलपर ऑप्शन इन द मोबाइल नंबर से रियल मी एट नाइन प्रो यू कैन सी तो आगे तो यू कैन चेक फ्रॉम हेयर हाउ टू अनेबल इट तो लाइक हेयर here we have to click on this build number so i will click on this build number seven times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and it will say you are now a developer so same process you have to do in your system uh, on your real time device and then you can uh, and if if the build number is not there you can search on google how to enable the developer and it will give you the information from you there you can enable when the developer option is enabled again you have to go to the settings and you can check from here developer option so in the settings you can search developer developer options so this developer options you will be it will be visible only when this developer options are enabled and when this when this developer options are enabled then you can go to this developer options and you have to enable it use developer options you have to enable it then scroll down okay scroll down keep on scrolling and here you will find usb debugging here so you have to enable this usb debugging so you will find this usb debugging over here so you have to enable the usb debugging okay and after that again scroll down keep on scrolling and you will get this thing verify apps over usb disable it if it is not disabled verify apps over usb you have to disable it similarly verify byte codes of debuggable apps again you have to disable it verify byte code or debuggable apps again you have to disable it so basically this is the setting you have to do okay so if this setting is done on your phone then you can connect your phone with the uh, 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 laptop using the uh, usb drive like when you transfer the photos then what you do you you connect your phone to the usb na similarly what you have to do you have to uh, connect your real time device with the laptop after doing these settings that is you have to disable this verify byte codes of debugable verify apps over usb you have to disable this thing and you have to enable and you have to enable this one usb debugging you have to enable on some phones you will find one more thing install via usb you have to enable the install via usb and usb debugging security settings you have to also enable that particular thing so if on some mobiles you below this usb debugging you will get one more thing called revoke usb authorization install via usb you have to enable it and one more thing usb debugging security settings that also you have to enable it okay like i have done uh, in my this thing So now, when you have done this setting, you can go to command prompt again, CMD, and in command prompt, you can write ADB devices like this. You can write ADB devices, and when you write ADB devices, 
so you will get this emulator number this is called udid number emulator 5554 this is the udid number of this emulator similarly if i show my real time device with you okay so again i will connect my real time device so that you can so again i am connecting the usb with my laptop just a second and connect your mobile with the usb drive like this it is connected and now if you see here is my running this is my real time device also that samsung this is my real time device here also if you see at the settings you see in the settings i have this developer options enabled last one and inside the developer options this is this is enabled first of all developer options should be enabled then again you scroll down scroll down scroll down keep on scrolling and you see this is disabled verify apps over usb verify byte codes or debuggable apps this should be disabled and uh, usb this one usb debugging this should be enabled okay usb debugging should be enabled and if they i, I told you on my mobile it is not there but on some mobiles you will get this option also this one uh, this one this one this one usb debugging i have already enabled on some mobile below usb debugging you will also get this install via usb you have to enable it you have install via usb enable and similarly usb debugging security settings you have to again enable it that is a setting you have to do and then you have to connect again when you go and you write adb devices so you see now two devices are connected adb devices this one is a emulator and this one is a real time device if emulator is not working no problem in that if emulator is not working virtual device you can stop virtual device no problem if it, if there is no emulator or, or if it is not working no problem you can use this real time device only and there is and there is no this is because i want to show my picture to you that's why i am showing it like this but if on your project there is no need to start this project on also this project which was created at the time of installation it is not required we do not have to restart this particular project also it is only required because we want to install this sdk manager only for this sdk manager i require this particular project to install this sdk tools obsolete that's all otherwise this project we do not need any android project emulator also i do not i do not require if you want to close it you can close it also it is not elementary you can exit it okay so now you have stopped this particular uh, android studio now because you have a device in front of you so you can check in front of you only that is whether my my application is launching or not, not whether it is clicking or not so you can you can uh, check on your mobile only but your mobile should be connected if you again write adb devices then it will show me the list of this only one device is connected this one okay so and we can use this device only so this is the this is the basic configuration requirement which we have to fulfill to write the apm test okay so hopefully you have understood today's session and uh, i will share this video